In this episode of Mr. RC Fanatic, we take this and turn it into this. Now that I've got a piece of styrene cut out, I've got it clamped into place just to see how things are going to fit. You can see there's a lot of interesting complex angles going on here. It's not actually perfectly straight up along the back. It has to parallel the roof, and the curves on either side have to be at least close to identical. Scotch tape really works well to help hold things into place. I'll be gluing along the inside here where the styrene meets more styrene with Humbrol Poly Cement. It's a really good glue that I enjoy using for styrene work, although I do prefer Plastrux Plastic Weld. In the areas where the styrene touches the black urethane, I'll be using Gorilla Super Glue, as it's the only glue I've been able to find which can actually bond the two materials together permanently. I've done some testing with the Gorilla Super Glue, and I've actually broken the plastic before I've broken the bond between the two pieces. I was given all these clamps for Christmas one year, and I've got to say they've come in so handy for the styrene work. With just these two pieces along the back here, it's starting to look a lot more like a truck. In fact, you might say this whole project's getting pretty gripping now. Yeah, I went there. One more of these sheets will also be added along the top to add up thickness to replicate the drip rail which is on the rest of the body. With it in place, you can now see that the vertical piece is sitting nice and straight. While it's looking really good, we need to start building up some thickness in that vertical section. To do this, we're using one millimeter styrene sheet. I've cut out a pattern out of paper that fits over top of the styrene, transferred it to more styrene, and now I'm gonna cut some slits in to help bend it more easily. The first layer of styrene I put in was under a lot of tension, and it worked out all right because I installed it from the inside of the body, and it had good surfaces to glue to. This new piece I'll be adding is on the outside, and even with a lot of clamps, it's not going to want to hold on very easily. So we're going to cut these strips into it and just carefully bend it over without snapping the plastic. That will help it to curl around really nicely, glue on really well, and then we can just sand it down smooth when we're done. I even found just using the knife blade can help take those sharp points off so that there's less sanding involved later on. The rear windows were marked out and cut out with a Dremel the same way the rest were. However, we've now come to the most difficult portion of this build, the annoying curvy top section. 
For the main straight portion of it, I managed to salvage part of the old D110 body which we can use again. This saves a lot of time and hassle of having to bend something out of styrene. Unfortunately that means we still have the corners to figure out, and for them, we'll be using many layers of stacked styrene sanded to shape. There may be other ways of doing this, but this is a method that I've researched into and wanted to give a try. When you have this many pieces to cut out, you really want to maximize your area space. So take one piece and use it as a stencil to draw out as many as you can on a small piece. Kind of like making cookies. I used a small sanding drum on my Dremel, as well as files and sandpaper to get this thing fitting properly. Make sure to check the fitment really frequently, as it's easy to go too far. While the results turned out awesome, I would say this is a very time-consuming method, and it'll definitely save you some time if you have a Dremel tool to work with. With all three pieces ready, it's time to glue them together, and then glue them onto the body. Always be sure to wear gloves when you're using super glue, as it joins skin really well and really fast. And if you're not wearing gloves, you will have your hands stuck together. You've been forewarned. The super glue container says that you only need to hold the parts you're gluing together for a few seconds. But in reality, when you're using more glue on an area where there's not a really tight fitment, leave it for a good while. I left this for a couple hours before I took these clamps off. On the back here, they stuck uh, these protruding pieces in. These are actually two layers of uh, .040 styrene. The idea is we're copying the uh, rubber window seal that uh, is on the front. They're protruding too far right now, but what we'll do is we'll go outside and we'll grab a Dremel and we'll make a lot of white styrene dust. There were some little holes down in here that I've capped off. We'll sand these ones flush. One of the great things about this 0 .040 styrene, unlike the stuff that's twice as thick, 0 .080, is that you can always laminate it to make 0 .080. So if you need the strength, you can. But this is quite a bit more flexible. So for these rear windows, where it's all bent in there, I didn't even have to use heat. If I want to bend right here, There's my bend. But you do have to be careful about that. You see what just happened? I was fortunate because the actual curve of the real truck was less than the breaking point of the styrene. But you do need to keep that in mind. If you want a nice sharp 90 degree bend, you may have to glue two pieces together. If not, you can always get some kind of heat source, heat it up, and then bend it. For that, you can use some kind of jig. You can get some rulers or uh, find some, some boxes or like uh, some kind of hard metal object that has a 90 degree on it. And you can place it along the one side, maybe even tape it on there, then heat the, the bend section up and then bend the other area down. And that'll give you a nice 90. At this point, it's time to put some body filler on here to fill in some of these uh, little dips and uh, cracks and stuff. It's all held together really nicely with the glue. We're just going to smooth it out. So I got some uh, Bondo brand body filler. I'm going to do about that much there, two or three square inches, maybe a quarter inch thick. Shake this up really well, knead it. That's plenty. Don't want to add much more than that. So then I'll just knead this up together and we'll start to put it on. You want to basically scrape it like this push pretty tightly down, mixes all of the ingredients together, because if they're not mixed properly, they're not going to harden properly.
it, guys. It's uh, been a pretty awesome journey. Got another truck done for another half a client. I think it's turned out pretty nicely. It's taken a little while, I gotta be honest. College has kept me busy. Work has kept me busy. RC Culture has been a great guy to work for. He's been very patient. But I think he's gonna be pretty happy with the result, too. This is the one that you guys have seen in the previous video. Got a functional tailgate with the main cab. This has started out as one of those D110 bodies which I cast, like what I made for uh, Low Rangers 2012, as in this video here. Just cutting the back off, made a new curvy piece into the roof, which was fun. Flattened off the back, made some windows and stuff. Next step for me is to get this thing boxed up and out of here. Well, it's all done. We got this box all nicely packaged up and everything's good and protected inside so it won't get smashed up during transit. And now it is time to make the long journey from Canada to Sweden. That's that guys, another episode done. RC Culture now has the truck with him in Sweden so he can utilize it in his project expedition. Pretty amazing build, do check it out. There's a link to his channel in the description box below. I'm sure he'd love to have you. For more videos like this on my channel, be sure to subscribe and also stay tuned for more videos on Fanatic Motorsports, a new side to the channel not all of you may know about where we work on real cars. Hope you've all had a really happy Christmas and all the best for a new year. I know I can't wait for 2016 Mr. RC Fanatic.